Hey guys, it's Kevin here, and let's take a look at post types in TypeRocket. Now, there are about a thousand different ways to add post types inside of WordPress. And so we want to look at why TypeRocket is a good choice for that and just how it makes things a little bit easier so you can speed up your development and just move through things quickly instead of having to download a plugin, for example, build it in some sort of user interface, maybe copy some PHP code from that interface into your system so it's a little bit faster or even registering it by yourself. You know, you have to do so many things with post types just to get them to work how you want. They are powerful tools, but we want to speed that up. And so that's what we're going to do now. So the best way to do that is to look at some post types that we've already registered and then kind of see how the code works behind that. So I'm going to demonstrate some example post types that I've added, some post types that we've modified, and then go from there. So here's a person post type. And you'll notice that when it's registered, it has a singular name and a plural name, people. And if I edit this person, we'll see that we're editing the person. You'll see that the placeholder text here says enter full name instead of enter title here. We have an image field. We have a text field. We have a custom taxonomy. If I look at that taxonomy, we'll see that that taxonomy itself has custom fields, a building number, a building photo. If I edit this taxonomy, we'll see that this building has been added, 401E, and then I have a nice little building photo in here. And then I've also modified a post type. This posts post type has the same department supplied to it. If I go over to the posts, hit edit here. I have Gutenberg turned off so we can work with custom fields within this. And we'll see that we also have a uh, custom field underneath the editor. We have a person search field. If I type in here, Kevin, we'll see that Kevin is down here. I can tab over to Kevin and hit enter. So that's keyboard accessible. And that's sort of what we've built out here. And this is just touching the surface of what type rocket can do to demonstrate. So I want to jump over to the code now and look at what we're doing under the hood. And you'll see that this is only 28 lines of code. We're doing all of this pretty simply. So I have a custom plugin here and I have type rocket installed in an MU plugin. So I don't have to worry about accessing type rocket any kind of special way. It's just there for me. And I've created this person post type that I've assigned to the person variable. And here I set the title placeholder text that we saw earlier to enter full name here. I set the icon to users. If I go back over here, we have like this little users icon. I set the editor form to have these custom fields and the arguments. I'm only using the title. I'm not using the editor. So for example, if I go to the person people and then hit person here, there's no editor. If I wanted to add the editor, I could do it here. Add it back in. And then that data will show up underneath the editor, which is why this says set editor form. It's underneath the editor. Or I don't really have to set these at all. I can just use what the post type comes with by default, which will include the editor. OK. We also have the uh, post post type, and that's assigned to this variable called, called article. And the reason for that is if I write it to the post variable, WordPress uses that in the global scope quite often. So it's best not to use that variable name. It can cause bugs um, within your theme and plugins and that kind of thing. So we'll try to avoid that. But here we'll see that we're setting the editor form as well. And it's adding these custom fields that we saw earlier, the search field where I could set the post type to person. So now I can relate two post types together in that way. And then I also have the custom taxonomy of department where I set it to hierarchical and then I set the custom fields in here, an image and text field. And then I apply the article and person post types to that taxonomy. And that's really all we had to do to get that functionality. There's nothing else to do. There's no controllers or models to make. You just have it working out of the box. And just to kind of demonstrate something here. If I set icon on this post, maybe I want it to be the quill. I can refresh and then I'll have the quill icon. So I don't have to have like the standard 
WordPress icons and things when I edit a post type that already exists. On top of that, you can go over to the dev section if you have the dev plugin installed and you can see a full list of icons that are available and their keyword names. And then on top of this, maybe I want to actually apply some quick labels. Maybe I want posts to be called article now when it comes to the labels. So now I have articles. Notice that it automatically pluralized it for me. If I go to articles, edit, I'm editing an article now. Pretty neat. And I think if I update this, it'll say article updated. Yeah, quite nice. So there's a lot more that we can do with custom post types. And I want to take a look at that with you in the next few videos. We'll look at so much.